A Darby student arrested, accused of making social media threats. An Olympic ski jumper who turned his unlikely childhood ski dreams into reality visits Whitefin. And Billings firefighters brave frigid temperatures to try to save a historic building. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. And I'm Dennis Bragg. Rescuers continue to search throughout the end of the evening for a longtime Flathead Valley doctor who went missing while skiing near Big Mountain over the weekend. Officials say that missing skier has been identified as 62-year-old Dr. Jonathan Scott Torgerson from Columbia Falls. Torgerson is a longtime practicing physician at North Valley Hospital as well as an experienced backcountry skier. The search is in its third day and is centered in an out-of-bounds area just to the northeast of the ski resort. Several organizations, including Search and Rescue, the Nordic Ski Patrol, Two Bear Air, and other volunteers were out at the break of dawn today. Flathead County Sheriff Chuck Curry says they're thankful that there was a break in the weather today after high winds and snow that really hampered search efforts over the weekend. Torgerson was reported to have been skiing alone in the Flower Point area of the Whitefish Mountain Resort. Curry says time is of the essence and they have been using as many resources as they can to locate the doctor. Uh, we've got probably around 24, 25 actual skiers and searchers on the ground. Uh, in addition, of course, to a search from the air, there's a chance the uh, missing man may have had a avalanche beacon on transceiver. So we're uh, we're coordinating that from the air. We have the ability to to locate and find those beacons. Curry is thanking all those who are helping in the search as it does continue. In the bitter route tonight, a Darby High School senior is in custody after other students reported him making threatening social media posts that referenced the deadly school shooting in Florida last week. Valley County Sheriff Steve Holton says 18-year-old McLean William Kaiser has been arrested and charged with felony assault with a weapon. He's being held without bond in the Valley County Jail after being arrested this afternoon. Kaiser is accused of making a post on social media that uh, led concerned parents to report him to Darby School Administrators over the weekend. They called the Darby Marshal's Office. Sheriff's officials say Darby School Administrators suspended the student this weekend. He didn't go to school today. No other students are suspected to be involved with those posts that administrators say sensationalized the shooting that killed 17 in Florida last week. School administrators say they took the reports from the students seriously and encouraged them to say something if they see anything suspicious. One of the things that we heard after the Florida shooting was the idea of you see something, say something. And so we were going to start our week off this week planning to get that message out to our kids. And then that's exactly what happened over the weekend. School Superintendent uh, Renneker says deputies will be at the school all week to make sure students and families feel safe. Kaiser is expected to be arraigned in River Valley County Justice Court within the next few days. Meanwhile, those investigators in Florida are learning more about the 19-year-old that was involved in that Parkland, Florida shooting. This as students press for tighter gun control measures from lawmakers in Washington and the president himself. Chris Martinez has the latest on the story. Nicholas Cruz made his second appearance in a Broward County court Monday as funerals and vigils for those he allegedly killed took place across the state of Florida. It doesn't matter which state, which country. No one should have to go through this devastation. Newly released documents reveal that in September of 2016, an investigator with the Florida Department of Children and Families visited the Cruz household after allegations of medical neglect. The investigator noted Cruz has depression, ADHD, and autism, that he cut his arms in a Snapchat post, and that he plans to go out and buy a gun. This wasn't the person that we knew. James and Kimberly Sneed, who took the 19-year-old in after his mother's death in November, sat down with ABC News earlier in the day. Before he moved in, one of the stipulations is he had to get a gun safe. And we got a gun safe on the way back from moving his stuff to our house. Angry over what they view as inaction in Washington, dozens of teenage students staged a die-in on the pavement in front of the White House, calling for gun reform. Neither of us believe that this comes down to politics. It comes down to children in classrooms who are being shot. The White House says President Trump is open to the possibility of supporting bipartisan legislation to strengthen the federal background check system. He plans to hold a listening session with high school students and teachers at the White House Wednesday. Chris Martinez, CBS News. Another very cold day across western Montana today, just bitter and freezing. It's February, we expect this, but still, 
It's kind of tough to take sometimes, but there are areas in western Montana tonight that will be well below zero. For a look at what's up, here now is meteorologist Russ Thomas. Russ. Yeah, thanks, Jill. It is tough to take for sure out there, especially when you have wind chill values that are so far below zero like we saw Sunday and right through this morning. Take a look at our current air temperatures. And again, we're sitting at nine below in Kalispell, and we're not talking about wind chill. It is just nine below out there right now. Five below in Pulse. In those areas, the sky has cleared. Eight below in Sealy. Now look at Missoula still hanging under some of the cloud cover. Uh, seven above right now. I do think that we'll see enough clearing in Missoula to drop down below the zero mark. We'll see how far. Really depends on how much clearing we see. Wind chill value right now around the state. How about 40 below is what it feels like in Dillon right now. 35 below in Lewistown. We'll have more coming up in just a few minutes. So when it's like this outside, it's great to have the Storm Tracker weather team at your fingertips. Just download our Storm Tracker weather app. It's free in the app or Google stores on your phone. Very comprehensive and it's nice to have when you're not by your television set. The cold front that pushed through the western half of the state this weekend did enough damage to Charlotte schools. They got President's Day off unexpectedly. Initially, Charlotte schools were going to be delayed by two hours this morning, allowing the roads to clear and make it safer for buses. But this morning, the head janitor of the school got there to discover the boiler that kept things warm wasn't working because the elementary and high school had no heat, temperatures well below freezing. Superintendent Steve Love canceled school for the day. Charlotte children can expect to have school tomorrow thanks to the help of staff. We've got a great staff and great parents. We, we hate to cancel school. Um, kids do best when they're in school on a regular basis, but it was just one of those things we had to take an emergency day. Our crew's been great, teachers have been great, so I'm, I'm real thankful for the crew we work with. Charlotte chose to have class today so they could take Friday off to attend divisional basketball tournament games. Billings firefighters faced frigid temperatures and flames as they worked to douse a fire in downtown Billings. This fire tore through the Billings foundry business late last night, engulfing more than half of that building. The fire marshal says the cause of the blaze was accidental, likely caused by an electrical failure. MTN Samantha Harrelson has an update. We had pretty heavy fire in, in the building and it was venting out, out the top of the roof already. Um, our, our crews decided to uh, fight it defensively. It was a difficult night for crews who had to battle the blaze through sub-zero temperatures. The Billings police assisted, bringing their crime van to the scene to allow firefighters a place to warm up. When it's uh, below zero and the wind's blowing and you're spraying water, it's, uh, it's taxing on people and, and that always uh, slows, slows our efforts down. Fire Marshal Mike Spini says the building likely a total loss. The, the owners are still um, grasping what happened. Um, we have a major loss behind us. Uh, you know, likely it's a total loss of the building and a lot of the contents in there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a big hit for this, this, uh, this family owned business. Billings Bronze has been around almost 30 years. Their process long, involved and highly detailed. They've produced bronze work for artists around the country and the world. Some notable pieces in town, the statue outside of the Rimrock Auto Arena, and the bronze sculpture that sits at the edge of the Billings Skate Park. Samantha Harrelson, MTN News, Billings. Glacier National Park administrators say they're ready to start the process of drawing up plans to rebuild the Sperry Chalet. But they also want to review what made that iconic lodge such a special place before it was destroyed by fire last summer. The Sprague fire wasn't even completely out before discussions already started about rebuilding the historic backcountry lodge. The Glacier National Park Conservancy has raised more than $127,000 for the project. Now park leaders are starting the process of designing the rebuilt lodge, planning to present some preliminary concepts at a program next week. Glacier Superintendent Jeff Mao says the park is excited to start designing, but want to hear from park visitors about what made Sperry so special. The first of several meetings to hear from the public and talk about the rebuild is set for February 28th from 630 to 830 at Flathead Valley Community College Arts and Technology Building. Anderson Hollis Architects of Denver, who oversaw rebuilding the Many Glacier Hotel, will oversee the initial design discussions. Coming up, Russ is back with a cold but mostly dry forecast for the week. And north central Montana continues to be slammed by snow. We'll take you to one town that was hit especially hard. Coming up after the break here on KPEC.